elephants i am dr srajana fasi i welcome you in my youtube channel today in this video i am going to talk on cleaning glassware you know friends clean glassware is essential for good results in organic chemistry laboratory even a small amount of impurities can sometimes inhibit chemical reactions catalyze undesirable side reactions or invalidate the results of chemical test or rate studies always clean dirty glassware at the end of each laboratory period or as soon as possible after the glassware is used this way your glassware will be clean and dry for the next experiment and you will get ready to start work when you arrive if you wait too long to clean glassware residue may harden and become more resistant to cleaning agents they may also attack the glass itself weakening it and making future cleaning more difficult it is particularly important to wash out a strong a strong bases such as sodium hydroxide promptly because they can eat the glass permanently and cause glass joint to freeze tight when glassware has been thoroughly cleaned water applied to it inner surface should wet the whole surface and not form droplets or leave dirty patches how we are use glassware that has been scratched or each may not wet evenly so friends you can clean most glassware adequately by vigorous scrubbing with water and laboratory detergent using a brush of appropriate size and shape to reach otherwise inaccessible spots organic residue that cannot be removed by detergent and water will often dissolve in organic solvent such as technical grade acetone never use reagent grade or solvent for washing for example it is difficult if not impossible to scrub the inside porcelain buchner or hirsch panel but squirreling a little acetone around the inside of the funnel stain and letting it drain through the porous plates should remove chemical residue and that have lost there use acetone sparingly and recycle it after use don't pour it down the drain as it is much more costly than water and may harm the environment be certain that acetone is completely removed from the glassware before you return it in the dryer so friends after washing always rinse glassware thoroughly with water a final distilled water rinse is a good idea and check it to see if the water wet it surface evenly rather than forming separate beads beads of water if it doesn't pass this test scrub it some more or use a cleaning solution note that some well used glassware may not pass the test because of surface damage but it may still be clean enough to use after throw scrubbing so friends you can see the lubricating joints what is the lubricating joints most specialized glassware components used in organic chemistry has rigid ground and glass joint called standard taper joints the size of tape, uh, taper joint is designed to by two numbers such as 90 22 in which the first number is the diameter at the top of the joint and the second is the length of the taper measured in millimeters glassware from a commercial organic lab kit or its equivalent purchased as separate parts can be used to construct apparatus 
for many different laboratory operations. For some operations such as vacuum distillations and glass joint should be lubricated with a suitable joint grease. For most other operations, lubrication of glass joint is unnecessary and may be undesirable. Your instructor should inform you if lubricant will be necessary. To lubricate a ground glass joint, apply a thin layer of joint grease completely around the top half of the inner joint. Do not lubricate the outer joint. Be careful to keep grease away from the open end of the joint, where it may come into contact with the contaminate your reaction mixture or products. When you assemble the components, press the outer and inner joint together firmly with a slight twist to form a seal around the entire joint with no gaps. Grease should never extend beyond the joint inside the apparatus. After Disassembling the apparatus, remove the grease completely by using a suitable organic solvent. You can remove petroleum-based grease with petroleum ether or hexane and silicon grease by thoroughly uh, cleaning with dichloromethane. An inner joint can be cleaned by wrapping a small amount of cotton loosely around the end of an application applicator stick dipping it in the solvent and wiping the joint with most moist cotton. Now assembling glassware. Paint. Standard taper joints are rigid, so glassware apparatus must be assembled carefully to avoid drain a strain that can result in breakage. First place the necessary clamp and ring at uh, appropriate locations on the ring stand. Use two ring stand for distillation setup. Then assemble the apparatus from the bottom up starting at the heat source. Position the heat source on ring or wire elevator so that it can be removed easily when the heating period is over. Otherwise it may continue to heat and reaction mixture or an empty distilling flask even after it is switched off, causing a dangerous of breakage, tar formations or even an explosion. Clamp the reaction flask or boiling flask securely, uh, securely at the proper distance from the heat source. As you add other component, clamp them to the ring stand, but don't tighten the clamp jaws completely until all of component are in place and aligned properly. Use as many clap as necessary to provide adequate support for all parts of the apparatus. You can see the assembling here. You see how it is clamping. This portion, this portion, this portion make always the grease. Here you can see here this portion, this portion. Now, friend, graduated cylinder. Graduated cylinder are not tightly accurate, but they are often used to measure specific quantities of solvents and wash liquid, or even some liquid reactants that are used in excess. To use a graduated cylinder, transfer the liquid being measured to cylinder by pouring it or by using pressure pipe until the cylinder is filled to the graduated mark uh, uh, corresponding to desired volume. Read the liquid's volume from the bottom of the meniscus as shown here. You can see reading the volume contained in a graduated cylinder from here. Heating under reflux. Most organic reactions are carried out by heating the reaction mixture to increase the reaction rate. The temperature of reaction mixture can be controlled in several ways. The simplest, most convenient being to use reaction solvent that has a boiling point within the desired temperature range for the reaction. Sometime a liquid reactant itself may be used as the solvent. The reaction is conducted at the boiling point of the solvent using condenser to return solvent vapor to the reaction vessel so that no solvent is lost. And this process of boiling a reaction mixture and condensing the solvent vapor back into the reaction is known as 
fitting under reflux or more informally refluxing where the word reflux refer to the flowing back of the solvent usually aeration time is a specific for aeration conducted under reflux that interval uh, should be measured from the time aeration mixture begin to boil not from the time heating is begin a round bottom flask are used as a reaction vessel for most of the synthetic experiment as a rule the reaction vessel uh, should be the smallest appropriate container that will be about half full or less when all of the reactions have been added several different kind of reflux condensers are available a water cooled condenser consists of two uh, centric tubes with cold tap water circulating through the outer tube and solvent vapor from a boiling reaction mixture rising up in the inner tube friends uh, circulating water cools uh, the wall of the inner tube cooling the vapor and causing them to condense to liquid droplets uh, and flow back into the reaction vessel a water cooled waste uh, condenser is used for most standard scale reactions conducted under reflux you see water in water out Uh, waste uh, condenser and this is the reaction starts apparatus for heating under the flux friend graffiti uh, uh, filtration now filtration is used to main purpose in organic chemistry to remove solid impurities from liquid or solution to separate an organic solid from a reaction mixture or crystallization solvent graffiti filtration is generally used for the first purpose and vacuum filtration for second centrifugations can be used for either in gravity gravity filtrations and liquid component of a liquid solid mixture drain through a filtering media such as filter paper or water by gravity alone leaving the solid on the filtering media the filtered liquid called the filtrate is collected in a flask or another container gravity filtration is often used to uh, remove drying agent from the dried organic solvent or liquid or solution and solid impurities from the hot recrystallization uh, solutions if the solid being removed is a coarse and quite dense it can sometime remove from a liquid by letting it settle to bottom of the container preferably an alumina flask and then slowly and carefully pouring the liquid into another container leaving the solid behind some of the liquid may remain behind in the flask but it can transferred using a partial pipette or filter uh, tip uh, pipette if necessary this process is called decanting should not be used with finely divided solid because some of the solid will inevitably be poured out with the liquid and contaminate it gravity filtration of moderate to large volume of the organic liquids can be carried out using a funnel with a short wide stem such as power funnel and relatively fast fluted filter paper uh, circles of ordinary filter paper can be fluted folded as shown in figure uh, glass wool uh, is sometimes used for very fast filtration of uh, pore solid a thin layer of glass a wool is placed inside the cone of the short steamed funnel cover the outer hole and the mixture to be filtered is poured directly onto the glass wool because fine particles will pass through the glass wool fiber and this method is often uh, used for pre filtrations of mixture and that be filtered again so friends you can see here fluted filter paper uh, powder uh, funnel a paint wire and collecting flask and this is the way you making fluted paper so hope this video will be helpful to you if you like this video then subscribe my channel and thanks for watching and this is the apparatus for uh, external steam distillation you can see here this is the steam delivery tube this is screw clamp Uh, a steam trap all steam trap not to scale from steam and thermometers